if I've asked this before, um, I apologize, but Ed, was there an oh wow moment that you had with, um, with Rocco? Um, man, that's a, that's a good question. You haven't asked it before. Um, what I would say is he, he had probably a couple of those moments, um, you know, in the off season where, and, and it honestly is, is different than probably what you'd expect, where truthfully he had a couple of days that weren't his best, um, both in the spring and both in the fall, and came back to have like a, a good next three practices, which I, I, I think is really, really hard uh, to do. It's hard to do. Um, you know, when you're in the, the dog days of, of fall camp or spring ball. And it, it was some of those moments where you're like, man, I, you know, we're, we're really going to have to figure out a way to, to, to get him back going. And, and honestly, I remember him coming back in a fall camp practice. And, you know, he, he probably had one of his best days of execution after two tougher days, which I thought was like a big deal for what he was going to need. Um, to have for the season. So I, I, I would say that uh, would be one. And then I would, you know, if I, if I was thinking about the season itself, um, you know, I, w I would say that that Oklahoma State game had some of those moments in them that I thought he, he stepped up, stood in the pocket, made throws, delivered the ball uh, consistently throughout that game. And I, f I felt like probably attacked in a different way um, you know, maybe even then we expected in that game and, and, and kind of opened us up to, I thought, what we could be and where we could go. The struggle to run the ball on Saturday, did it feel like what was holding you guys back early in the season or was it unique to what Texas was doing and obviously who they had on the field? Yeah, unique to who they are, you know, for sure. It, uh, yeah, I, I thought what our plan was to go and execute in the run game, um, you know, Hindsight, you're always going to make a, a few changes here and there, uh, but I, but I definitely thought it, it gave us the best chance to move the ball there. We knew that we were going to have to be efficient in the pass game, um, and we knew we were going to have to ha find that rhythm uh, to be able to go back and forth between um, pass game and run game and try to keep those guys off balance. Uh, for sure, we felt like there was more opportunities for us to to make plays in the run game, um, but at the same time, we felt like we were able to move the ball and and, and execute on drives and and at least get the ball moving in some different ways. Um, you know, rather than just having to, you know, run the ball on, on three straight downs and, and, and things like that. So I, uh, yeah, I, I think it is about who they are. And, and we knew that that was going to be a tough task uh, to get those guys moving and just, just what they do defensively, um, what they're willing to give you and what they're not willing to give you uh, was going to make that challenging. What's been your impression of the Iowa State, Kansas State series and you know, where do you see it with some of the rivalry games that you've been a part of? Yeah, you know, you you kind of know it's going to be one of those knockdown, drag out type of games. You know, I I feel like, you know, to be truthful, the the first year, um, you know, the first year I was here, uh, that was you know late home game. I remember, maybe one of the first times, second time, maybe in the black jerseys. I feel like that's like a lasting memory for me. Um, you know, and they go up big early, and I, I remember. You know, David Montgomery, Hakeem Butler having huge, huge games. Brock Purdy um, leading us back. Mike Rose. Like, I, I remember those guys stepping up in moments. And, and you need your playmakers to step up in moments and, and you know, and, and, and be the players that in a in a big-time game, big-time environment, they can go and take a hold of it. Obviously, I remember going back there the, the following year and in one of the windiest games I think I've ever been a part of, um, those guys really getting after us and, you know, felt like we walked out of that one and, and felt like we weren't the most physical team. And that was disappointing. And again, those 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 games coming at the end of the season uh, probably leave a little bit more of a lasting impre impression, both positively and negatively. Um, and, and, and so, you know, you, you feel like those two games are great examples of like, it's going to be physical. Um, the, the guys who are able to step up and make plays in the moments um, are going to have the best chance to give their team, um, you know, to lead their team to victory. And you feel like going into this one, it's going to be no different than it. And I feel like it has been since I've been here, um, you know, in those moments. But they're, man, uh, they do a great job, man. They do a really good job on defense. They do it. They've, you know, we've, we've seen them on uh, crossover a little bit on offense and obviously have done a great job there. But they, they've got an identity. They know themselves uh, well. And, um, yeah, you know, they, they usually at the end of the year, you feel like they're a team that grows and gets better and is, is playing good football at this time of the year.
this game is going to be a casualty of realignment and that it won't be played every year for at least the foreseeable future. What are your thoughts on either that specifically or just in general nationally with realignment is going to cause a lot of these rivalries to change, evolve, or even go away? Yeah, I think, you know, we enjoy – you know, we enjoy those rivalry games. We enjoy playing teams that there is some familiarity, whether that's um, with the region that we um, are in, just the consistency of playing a team. Um, but at the same time, like, I think you could you could argue both sides. Like, I think that there will be uh, new, you know, we go to BYU for the first time, and, and that felt new and exciting. And I think that there will be a lot of that. There will be a lot of that with the matchups. Um, clearly, I think everybody is, is – aware that college football is changing. And I, so, so I think to say, man, I just missed the old way that it was when these two teams were always playing each other at this time of the year. No offense, Randy. Um, but but I, I just think that that's, that's something that, um, yeah, th there will be new exciting parts of, of what I think that this conference will look like, the opponents that we get a chance to go and play. And I think even for our players and, um, you know, you, you get guys from all over the map. And so, as, as much as uh, me personally being from Kansas City, I get fired up about the K-State game. Um, you know, there's guys that when we play, um, you know, when we play UCF at some point in time, man, they're going to be fired up for that because that's a team that they're familiar with, that they know um, that they've got a couple of buddies that, that play on their team and stuff. And so uh, I, th I think in-house, that's, that's probably how it feels more than anything, um, you know, when you think about realignment. Back to Rocco, it feels like when you talked about him having maybe a tough day in spring ball and fall camp and coming back and showing you something after that, it feels like in season he's done that at times where if he throws an interception, next drive he's really sharp. Is that a function of him being able to just stay? Because it's obviously not, hey, I'm just going to pound away, you know, but he's going to be calm and collected and coming back, and that correlates to what oh, you saw I, in preseason. I, wholeheartedly. I think it, it says a lot about his poise, a lot about his character. Um, you're right. He's he's had some of those moments in game that man, he has a rep that he wishes he could have had back, but you you haven't really seen him uh have that happen series after series or have a moment that leads to another um bad moment and another bad moment, which again, that is hard to do. And and that does say a lot about him and uh just his resiliency, like his ability to come back, his ability to fight through. Um, and his ability to get back to fundamentals, to get back to day one, trusting what he knows, trusting what he sees. And again, that's always important at quarterback. They're going to show you pictures. They're going to be able to change things up. You're going to get hit once or twice. You make a bad throw. Um, but to be able to come back, you, you got a lot of reps still in the game. And so if, if you can continue um, just to grow within the game, grow within the reps, uh, it, it obviously is going to give your team a chance to compete at the end, which, you know, even in those games, we, we, we've had a chance at the end. I don't know whether we'll get to talk to you again before the bowl game, but um, the practices leading up to the bowl, I don't know how we're going to get 15 or whatever. 15, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, from a quarterback perspective, will the first 10 of those be pretty much all JJ? Uh, I don't know if I've thought about the first 10 and who exactly. I, I do know this. You know, I, I remember sitting up in, um, you know, at the end of the BYU game and thinking, man, we're, we're going to be bowl eligible. And even like scanning our sideline and thinking, Man, there's going to be guys on that field right now who will benefit greatly um, from those extra practices, from from being able to uh, just just get on the field with them. Uh, you, you get into truthfully behind the scenes, you you get into the season and you're so focused on what you're doing uh, week to week. You're so focused on the on the scheme itself. You you're working development as it goes, but uh, again, you're you're trying to lay out uh, at least from the quarterback's perspective. You're trying to lay out what this defense does, what they're going to see, what they need to anticipate, and just to be able to go back to basics, to, to hone in on some of the fundamentals and um, just the details of, of how we're trying to execute, I think will be huge. And again, for a guy like JJ, um, for a guy like Tanner, uh, we, you know, you talk about the young guys that we got at running back, at receiver, at tight end, like those guys will have, uh, to me, 10 to 15 great practices that they can grow and even feel more confident going to the next spring. I remember personally, you know, I went to a bowl game my redshirt freshman year, and um, it was like, to be honest, it was like a hard, we practiced all 15 times, and they were hard practices. And they were days where it felt like, you know, your, your job was on the line every day you walked out there. Um, but I remember feeling 
you know, I, I felt like walking into the spring, I had just got an extra um, load of just, just information and, and uh, forced execution. And, and, you know, just, just to be able to do that. I remember even honestly, like making throws that I hadn't made in the season and working progressions that I hadn't done in the season. And so I do think that it'll be a great opportunity for our guys, um, for JJ specifically, but for our team at large. How has, has JJ held up? I mean, coming in here with all the headlines, the recruiting headlines he has, whether say what you want about the recruiting star system, sure. but, um, how is it, how is he held up? I mean, being the, the backup guy and played whatever three games. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're right. What you're pointing to is, is it's a challenge. He's held up really well. It's a challenge for, I think, you know, this, this era of college football players, you know, to, to be able to hold up, to be able to sustain, even when you're not getting the result that you want. And, um, you know, that, that takes a lot of work. Personally, it takes a lot of work just from the environment that you're in. Uh, but he, he's done a great job of coming to work every day, of continuing to grow. Uh, Coach Campbell does a great job. We, you know, we do a scrimmage at the end of um, every Wednesday practice where we get those guys on the field. And, you know, some of what we're talking about in the bowl prep, we, we get a chance to do that every week. And I think that those guys attack that. They, they look forward to those moments to be able to go out there and, and – you know, just just work execution against our defense, and um, so so he's done a really good job there. But that's that's a real real challenge, and uh, it's it's you know it's not easy because like like you're saying, everybody knows that there's always going to be you know outside noise, outside voices of of you know um, that that somehow are going to get to players in the locker room. And for I, I think the best guys in our program have been the guys that are able to sustain, that are able to develop, that are able to grow even through those, um, you know, through, through those moments where they're not getting the result that they're, you know, that they showed up to college hoping for. You know, I, I, I feel like most guys, you show up to college and you anticipate, man, I've been playing football my whole life and I'm going to go out there on the field and I'm going to play this year. And when you feel like you are watching people play the game that you love, that can be really, really hard. Um, but if you can find a way to, to get through that and to grow through that, um, I, I do think it can make you a whole lot better player because you've, you've seen a different perspective. You have a different sense of gratitude about what you get to do every day. Um, you see things from a different view than, than being in it and, and having to prepare in that way every week. Kind of an interesting question, I guess, but you and Colin Klein, K-State's offensive coordinator, both played college football at the same time. You both got your first opportunity as a Big 12 offensive coordinator at the same time in similar circumstances. Um, do you ever kind of look at other people in your situation and kind of try and take away from them as similar age, similar philosophy, it seems like, and all those different things? And I guess, if so, what relationship do you have with him at all? That's a great example. And, um, you know, Colin and I happen to be close, and I got a lot of respect for him and what he's done. Truth is, uh, way back, I couldn't tell you how many years at this point, maybe eight years at this point, he was the offensive coordinator at UNI um, and interviewed me, shoot, it would have been probably eight years ago. And so we got connected then. And uh, man, I've I've always respected who he was, um, not only as a as an offensive mind, but but just as a person and and what he's about, his faith, um, family to him. Uh, so so yeah, I got I got a lot of respect for him, and, and obviously what they've done there, um, you know, it's it's been it's been uh, it's been impressive to see just the growth that they've had. Um, specifically on offense, and so uh, you, you do from the, again. It, I always enjoy. We enjoy having them on crossover because, truthfully, they they from an offensive perspective, th there are some similarities. There's a similar mentality with how they approach um, that you can appreciate from the outside looking in. Um, but but yeah, I, I, naturally, um, you know, I think being in those shoes and, and having maybe some some similarities in, in backgrounds, you do you pay attention to those guys and you try to check out how they're doing things and how they're growing and developing what they're doing on and off the field um, to continue to grow yourself. And so, yeah, that's that's a that's a great example of somebody doing it right. And and uh, that's obviously had a lot of success.